this question is asking us to figure out how many things we need to make or produce during the month of July. Once we know what our sales budget is, then we can use the beginning inventory and whatever parameters we have for ending inventory to figure out how many things that we need to make during a particular month. That's the goal of the production budget. So what we're seeing here is that um, this company is selling one product. During July, they plan to sell 24,000 things and 30,000 things during August. It looks like during the month of June, they actually did sell 25,000 items. Now, here's where some of the tricks come into play is that the ending inventory, there are going to be certain assumptions or parameters that the company will establish. And so what they want to do is they want to keep 3,000 items on hand plus 30% of the following month's sales. And that's going to be our predicted ending inventory. On June 30, this requirement was met. So the first thing that we want to do here, um, I like to lay it out this way, is let's put June, and then let's uh, obviously next put July, and then let's, let's put August. So the starting point is going to be, all right, uh, how many things do we expect to sell? So the expectation was 24,000 items during July, 30,000 items during August, and we know that they sold 25,000 items during the month of June. Now, on top of that, our ending inventory, we're going to need to produce. So. The ending inventory is going to be 3,000 plus 30% of the next month's sales. So let's just kind of do a little side calculation right here. Ending inventory, so on July 30th, would be 3,000 plus 30% of August's predicted 30,000. Okay, so if we do the math on that, 0.3 times 30,000 is 9,000, add 3,000 to that number. Our desired ending inventory at the end of July will be $12,000. Now, the beginning inventory is another component of this, and we don't know what the beginning inventory for July is, but we have enough information to figure out what it would be. So, the ending inventory for June would have been 3,000 items plus 30% of predicted sales for July using the same methodology, the same parameters. So 0 0.3 times uh, 24,000 is 7,200 and add to that 3,000. We would say the ending inventory at the end of June is 10,200. Now, whatever our June ending inventory was, will become our beginning inventory for the month of July. And now we can figure out what July's production should be. Let me just uh, take that calculation down here. We're running a little bit tight on space. So for July, we need to make 24,000 things just to satisfy demand for our product. We need to make another 12,000 items to satisfy our ending inventory. But the good news is, we plan to start the month with a beginning inventory of 10,200. So we can take uh, 24,012, put that together, it's 36,000. Subtract the beginning inventory and the required production, no dollar sign needed there, this is units. The required production for the month of July is 25,800 units. Let's just take a second and, and review because this is a kind of a critical problem. So what we did was we summarized the sales activity for each month, and then we determined what the ending inventory would be at the end of each month using the formula or the parameters that are set in, in the problem. So we determined the ending inventories here, and once we knew the June ending inventory, we, we knew that would also be July's beginning inventory. Then from there, we could figure out July's production, this is to satisfy sales demand. This is to have a safety stock in ending inventory. But then obviously, if we started the month with something in inventory, we don't need to make that item. So we can subtract the beginning inventory. 